What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to The Sav Show. My name is Civilian. I'm the host of this show. And today, I'm just riffing on a little uh, passage that I read from Marcus Rilius uh, in Meditations. And um, yeah, just my thoughts on that. And just kind of, I wanted to share this like piece of information with you and the world and uh, give you my thoughts on it. So as some of you may know, I'm in the process of reading uh, Marcus Rilius Meditations. And what I would like to say first, before I dive into this specific um, uh, v- verse or, or thought, is this book right here, right? Um, you know, and for the longest time, I've been following Ryan Holiday. I've been fo- following his work on Stoicism. I've read all of, uh, most of his books. Um, I've done a bit of slight digging into Stoicism outside of his work. You know, when I went and got the Daily Stoic, um, which is, you know, still his work, but it's kind of more... Uh, reading specific pass or getting specific passages from the Stoics and then his translation and he's like uh, kind of riff on it. Um, but this is the first time and I, and I know that he his favorite book is Meditations, but this is this is the first time that I, I've actually got a book directly from the Stoics um, that's been translated and I've, I'm, I'm actually going through it uh, line by line and, you know, getting it straight from the horse's mouth as you might think, uh, as you might say. And although I don't believe um, Marcus ever would have said that. I, one thing that's like, there's a couple of things that are really fascinating to me is one, the, 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 the imagery of his uh, way of speaking is just mind blowing. I love it as a, as a, as a lyricist, as a wordsmith, as a person who enjoys, um, you know, slick writing. I mean, this guy just had imagery for days and, and, and the way that he would, uh, the way that he would pull ideas together was just, you know, fascinating to me. And um, it, it's really fun to kind of dig into it and unpack it and, and, and really see the way that he paints pictures with words. So that's the first thing. The second thing is he, the, the frankness in the way that he just says things is just so blunt and direct. And um, it's, it's this paradox where it's like um, on the one hand, it's so fanciful and, and so – um, you know, so packed with the imagery and, and, you know, this slick writing, but on the other hand, it's so like direct and blunt and, you know, forceful and to the point. And both of those things are beautiful individually and together. It just makes for such, I'm going to say it, fun reading. Like it's fun. There's a lot of stuff that's obviously dense and like kind of goes over my head because I don't actually understand like the context or the terms, but so much of it is fun. It's fun to read. Like for real, it's fun to read because at the at the foundation of it all is language, which our entire world is made up of. And, um, you know, really old, really well-researched and practiced knowledge that society and humanity is, is built on. And um, it's wisdom. It's old-ass wisdom. That's what it is. Uh, so it's built on those two things, language and old-ass wisdom that is like, you know, he, you know, this dude is, and, and, and Ryan Holiday makes his point all the time. This guy is not a guy that we should feel relatable to. He was a Roman emperor 2,000 years ago. He was the most powerful man in the world 2,000 years ago. And he should not be relatable, but he is. Um, and he's relatable because he's, he's, uh, it, it, human experience is so well articulated and so normalized that Everything that he says is just, it's just real. It's just real. Anyway, so that's thats my little riff on uh, meditations and just reading a proper actual text from the Stoics and and how much I'm just fucking frothing it. Imagine Marcus Aurelius really is thinking about me or, or just hearing me say that, how much I'm fucking frothing it. I'm like I'm frothing Marcus Aurelius. Like he would, I don't know, he'd probably be cool with it to be honest. Um, so anyway, I'm going to read this passage right now. Uh, He goes, uh, so this is uh, Meditations uh, 47. He goes, in this world, there is only one thing of value, to live out your life in truth and justice, tolerant of those who are neither truth nor just. So in this life, there is only one thing of value, to live out your life in truth and justice, tolerant of those who are neither truth or just, not just. I think that is like, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, I say, I say this a lot about a lot of things, but that is potentially one of the most powerful phrases and ideas 
because it, it does this one thing really, really well. It it um it grounds you, right? So in a time, uh, in a in a in a world, in a society where so many things are prioritized, right? In definitely the wrong order most of the time. So many other things are prioritized. He goes, no, no, no. None of those things are actually important. The only thing that is actually important, that is actually of value. And, you know, we think about, you know, value as being associated with like assets, with crypto, with NFTs, with with real money, with, with, um, with status, with power. We think about, you know, how big our TV is and how big our car is and who thinks we're cool and how many likes we have on social media. We think all of those things as being valuable. And he's saying, no, none of those things are actually valuable. The only thing that's actually of value is that you live a life that is truth and just whilst being tolerant of those who are neither truthful or just. Um, and it really just like brings you down a couple of levels and just goes, you know, just calm down. It's all good. As long as you're focusing on these things, you're living a life of value. And it makes it all, it makes it all so much easier. You know, like if I'm running around in my unaware kind of like uh, egoic state where I'm like, oh, I've got to do this, got to do that, got to impress this person, got to impress that person, got to see this, got to see that. You know, while I'm doing all these things, I'm like losing myself a little bit. I'm losing, you know, I'm losing control of my, my levels of awareness and I'm losing control over my temperament, my emotions. I'm, I feel like I need to be this and be that. And, and it all gets a bit overwhelming and it gets a bit much from time to time. And you kind of get torn apart and you're like, oh shit, am I doing it the right way? Oh shit, reset, got to do it again. This, that, the other. And you, you end up being like a giant pinball. And he's just saying, no, it's all good. If, you live, if you're living truthfully, uh, sorry, let me read it again. If you're living uh, in truth and justice and you're being tolerant of those who are not living like that, that is value. That's a high value individual. That's a high value life and nothing else actually matters. You know, um, it's simple. It's, um, it's a little bit uh, idealistic, but it's real and it's really attainable. It's really attainable. And I think that's, the most beautiful part about it is that like, as long as I'm shooting for this one thing, nothing else really matters. Uh, let's be real. None of it matters. Um, you know, we can act like certain things do. Sure. Um, we can tell ourselves and those around us and those that we love that other things matter, but uh, none of it really matters, you know? Um, and, and, and that, here's the thing. When you're just focused on that, you take the pressure off and then you can actually enjoy the other stuff as well. Like if you're doing this thing of value, which is to live in truth and justice, then you take the pressure off yourself needing to do any of the other stuff so that when you do the other stuff, it's enjoyable. It's leisure, you know, like um, me needing to be a successful solopreneur is not important as long as I'm living a life of truth and justice. But if I'm living a life of truth and justice and I take the pressure off myself actually needing to do anything else, then it means I can do those things with, with, with passion, with like, um, you know, this, this sense of, you know, I want to do this. I want to create, I want to build and, and, and not have any pressure be there. Um, obviously you can make arguments about pre pressure being necessary, you know, to forge diamonds and all that bullshit. But, um, I, I go back to this like idea all the time that I'm trying to optimize my life for joy and gratitude. And, and I think it's a lot easier to optimize your life for joy and gratitude when the only benchmarks that you need to hit every single day is was I truthful, was I just and tolerant of others who weren't. Was I truthful, was I just, was I tolerant of those who weren't. That's a pretty easy benchmark to hit, I think. Everything else is fucking a bonus from there. Everything else is great. Everything else is fucking dandy. Um, yeah. So anyway, something to meditate on, something to think about. Uh, but yeah, that's it for the Sav Show today. Uh, let me read it one more time for everybody who's so keen for me to read it one more time. Uh, in this world, there is only one thing of value to live out your life in truth and justice, tolerant of those who are neither truth, not just. All right, that's it for the Sav Show this week, guys. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already. Drop me a comment below if you liked anything I talked about today. And I'll see you next week on the Sav Show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let's go.